Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Collegiate Esport Commissioner's Cup. I am Seth Lentz, and I get a really neat opportunity here. We get to interview Burns from EU United. Burns, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. We're on day two of the event. It's been a fantastic one. I ran into you yesterday, but yep. we were running around like chickens with our heads off, and it has been, I mean, how, how has your time been here? What has this event kind of been like? Yeah, it's great. I just love being in the passion pit, seeing all the college kids go at it. Uh, reminds me of like an old school MLG event almost, but being like in the epicenter of the passion yes. pit, seeing Rocket League, Valorant, Overwatch, and Smash, just it's amazing to see all of these schools compete against each other and get a shot to play on this main stage. Yeah, no doubt about it. And tell us a little bit about kind of what is what is EU United, right? Because we know that yeah, sure. you're here, we know you're here to represent them, but for the people that don't know, what, what is EU United? Yeah, EU United was founded in 2016. We're a professional esports organization. Uh, we've been in League of Legends, Overwatch, all the way to uh, Battle Right, I think it was called back in the day. Uh, <laughs> Right now in uh, 2022, we are in Gears of War, Halo, Rocket League, PUBG, wow. and announcing a new title tomorrow. Ooh. Uh, I know, get get the small intel here. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I went pro in Call of Duty when I was younger. I ended up playing my last event under E United, switched in 2016, and I've been wow. uh, the GM ever since. So it's, uh, it's a true blessing to be able to stay with an organization for as long as I have. And uh, we love giving back to the collegiate community. Uh, I actually graduated from Full Sail in 2013. I was a little confused yeah. about the jersey. I was yeah. A little... yeah, so the Full Sail boys are out of the tournament, unfortunately, but I decided I would rep them today I in their it. honor. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just great. I, I love working with younger individuals who are trying to find their path in esports, and yeah. these college kids are really showing what they're all about. Yeah, so to be kind of an ex-pro player, where a collegiate scene at the time didn't exist, especially not to the scale yeah. right now, what is it like to see such high levels of success, such high levels of support for something that you weren't able to kind of get as much support in at the time, something that was looked down on a lot more. Yeah, I'm uh, extremely jealous, that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Full Sail started their program in 2017. When I was there in 2011 and 12, it was just a bunch of nerds running around, just right. creating their own clubs. I was still striving to go pro, but now you have these opportunities to play right. on main stage, play in front of thousands of people. We just had locals back in the day. You would show up and play for like $200, $100. It was like lunch money. Right. Now these kids are playing for scholarships. They're playing for fame. They could pop off here and end up getting a sponsor for ten dollars or $20,000 from somebody. Right. So the opportunities are just endless at the moment. What is going on, everybody? And welcome to week one of ECAC. I am Septilence, joined by Relic, and we are super excited to bring you a single best of seven series between SUNY Poly and Central Maine Community College. Now, Relic, immediately before we get into the teams and all nothing we know about them, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, thank you. Uh, super late. Yes, I look, I know some people are going to be like, oh my goodness, they've let a British guy in here. What on earth are you doing? But listen, I love the American high school scene. I love the American collegiate scene. And it's fantastic to be back here on eSports. So first time with you as well. I'm super excited about it. Shout out to Coltoon as well in the back, bringing you all the pretty pictures. Uh, and yeah, it's the start of a brand new season, of course, for the eSports, oh, sorry, the Eastern Conference uh athletic or the eastern i need to get this one right the eastern college athletic conference there you go there's a lot of different uh conferences that we cover here of course and so sometimes the names are going to get messed up but you know what we have some two really exciting teams here two teams that we really don't know too much about uh really sunny poly the only team which we've kind of got previous with but they're running a whole new roster uh, as is one to be in the collegiate scene uh, which means that we've really just got a fresh slate to enjoy at the start of a fresh season absolutely and nothing more exciting than the first game of the season because your first time on stream whether it's you know your first time on stream ever or just this season it always comes with a little bit of expectation this is the time in that yeah. season to show your opponents we're here to win we're here to play <laughs> as aggressively as possible you don't want to be winning one zeros or overtime four threes you want to be winning five six seven to nothing this is all about sending a message arguably more so than it is about winning today is the day for these teams to really set their paces further into the season it really is look i i had my start in this amazing team of four, 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 four. I was a driver, and there was nothing that I enjoyed more than watching myself back on broadcast Absolutely. beating other people. That's one of the most satisfying experiences ever, and it's certainly satisfying for Tukan. <laughs> There's no cock whore about this, just 
Oh, that's I mean, a good goal. Coming in quick. Immediately only 12 seconds off the clock. Toucan goes up and over a defender. And that's an open goal. It's one of those situations. Part of the reason I love Rocket League. A millisecond of an opportunity can make or break a goal just like that. One millisecond later, that goal would have been blocked out by a defender. But Toucan found the shot. Now we are moving right back in. Moving in quickly. Crafting dead. Goes up toward the goal. A little bit of a slow. I thought it was going to be a fake. But it seems like they just kind of gave up on it now. Ball control still going to be in favor of CFCC. But not for long. Here comes Wesh in off the corner fighting for ball control and it's a bit of a sloppy one as there was almost no boost Ooh. on the side of SUNY Poly but that is not going to stop Wesh tonight they are already up 2-0 24 seconds 34 seconds off the clock that's a real nice little bit of air dribbling as well and you can see that there is a player in goal sets themselves up all right but a little bit of nerves really coming out from CMCC no doubt. you're not really sure whether to go up and try and attack it but also risk missing the ball on the other side you've got Sunny Polly here they've already scored two goals the nerves have been settled and within the first minute too a quick counter there is going to be denied Sunny Polly now like I mentioned earlier this isn't the Sunny Polly that I've seen but I, I you know I've seen one variation of their teams and I remember it to be a very good one to see this team come out and live up to that name to fill those shoes so quickly it's a great omen for this team moving further into the season we're just now looking it's only been a minute relic and suny Pali finds themselves up 2-0 and they've got some really nice demo plays here in the midfield as well. Whenever you think that Central Main are going to come out with some nice passing plays, all of a sudden you find Sunny Polly taking the ball off them, removing them from the field, or putting together a beautiful three-man play like this. Ben P on the board now with all three players looking like they've come in super warmed up. That's a team hat trick. I mean, that is one goal per player on the side of Suni Polly. And like you said, coming in super warmed up so far. Things looking great. Suni Polly up 3-0. Three to zero. 3.46 on the clock. We are just now getting right back into our fourth kickoff and it looks like it's going to be ball control in favor of CMCC and I'm going to say Relic it's, I'm not seeing signs of weakness in terms of ball control from CMCC what I'm seeing a lot of is that struggle to flip from offense to defense when they are in the offensive slot it seems like they really got a lot going on but the moment they lose that ball control it feels like they're a turtle flipped onto their back and I think the turtle analogy is pretty apt as well because you, you get the tendency of, oh, well, we've just conceded three goals in the space of a minute and a half. Maybe we should immediately look to defend them right. and try a counterattack when often in Rocket League, actually, especially in the current meta, Fighting fire with fire, honestly, is, is the best way to go. So, no CMCC, doubt. I hope that they can find their way into this game. At least try and get a goal on the board. They're down the other side of the pitch, finally. But again, the demos come out too can brutal. Yeah, and something really interesting I'm seeing from the side of CMCC. And we'll oh. let this goal go in. That's going to be a great shot from Ben P. Oh, I'm sorry. That is a team hat trick. I don't think Ben P had scored before that point. But the, the point still stands that this team is doing a phenomenal job. Something I'm noticing here, Relic, that is unique is it almost feels like CMCC is boost droughting themselves. I feel very often we're seeing them at 0 or 20 or 30. When in reality, boost is arguably the most important thing in this game. No doubt. And again, it is another tendency that comes with trying to, I guess, overplay a little bit, especially when you've got wonderful plays that seem effortless like this. Another great wow. follow-up. Oh, the shadow strikes coming out from Sunny Polly. You can tell that their communication is on point. You can see here, yeah, the ball is loose, but that's an immediate call-off. In comes Ben P. That's a personal hat-trick for him as it's a famous five and we're not even at half-time. Not even at that halftime yet. Nine seconds shy, and SUNY Poly find themselves up 5-0. to zero. Now, folks, remember this is a best of seven, which means one team has to win four games, and that's the beauty of Rocket oh. League, right? Is you lose the first game, there's that GG go next mentality. You can take what you learned in game one, implement it in game two, and try to tie the series back up to one to one. Historically, it doesn't matter what level you're looking at. High school, Rocket League Championship Series. Game one is always the most anonymous, uh, anomalous game. Not the most anonymous game. Sometimes it is, but anomalous, certainly. Because you can change things around. And especially in a best of seven scenario, you've got more time than Absolutely. one would expect. Especially this early in the season. Again, it's another nice ball in front of the net opportunity there. A car being thrown, I think, was crafting dead there. But... It's how Sunny Polly is dealing with these attacks. They are super cool, super calm. They wait for their moment and they strike with, with efficiency right down the other end. Coming quick now, a bit of action in the midfield. Ben P goes up and over two defenders, struggling it up through center field. There's the follow up from somebody, but the crossbar, that devious fourth Beautiful. teammate is not going to stop Wesh. Plan A falls through. Hey, plan B right around the corner. Wesh from that center field knocks it into goal, and Sunny Polly finds themselves up 6 to 0 in game one.
we're going for something as audacious as a run ahead of the ball to try and bump the final defender away. And even when that doesn't work because the defender has moved to the side and has readjusted, again, that entire team just swarms around the goal. And unfortunately, with CMCC, there's not enough confidence at the moment. And I don't blame them. Again, you're six goals behind. You didn't start the game very well. It's really easy to get set into a, a well, I guess, this one is over mentality. But CMCC, if you are listening, I definitely encourage you, don't get too disheartened. Another one goes in for Toucan. The momentum is going Sunny Polly's way. But again, you do have perhaps 10, 20, 30 minutes to enjoy yourselves, to calm down, to relax, and to start things anew with game number two. Yeah, game number two is going to be the only hope here for CMCC to get back into the series ball. You know, hypothetically, games three and four as well. But my point there being, game one is going to be down and out. And I feel like I think this is going to be the opportunity for CMCC to talk, uh, you know, discuss in the couple of minutes between games one and two as we're setting up the lobby, just kind of what was making it so possible to find these goals. And I think a lot of that is leaving the goal open. I think we're seeing all three defenders or offensive players from CMC. I mean, look, that's a wide open goal. Nobody's in the back third. Nobody's in the back half even until it's far too late. And I think if CMCC changes their play style that one little bit and puts somebody on a hard defense, that could bring this team a brand new style of life. Yeah, listen, my real name is, is James Cook. There's a lot of Star Trek references that come with that. And I feel like the one that we need to really utilize here is it went from very much nothingness to red alert immediately. <laughs> there was a lot of panic there when they were actually in a really advantageous position, CMCC. They had the players in front of net. They had the lining up of opportunities. And sadly, when the moment called, they were not able to answer. And Sunny Polly goes right down the other end scores an eight and we don't want to talk about you know quality difference here or there just yet because i am truly a believer in the synergy of teams i want to see these three working together a little bit more talking together a little bit more they've got a lot to learn from sunny poly and i certainly hope that as the series progresses we will see more of that evolution really that's always what i say about teams it's what separates the goods from the greats is that communication is it three players playing on a team or three players working together as a team and it really can separate those teams in situations just like this once like you said if cmcc boosts up that communication 25 30 percent that could really go a long way we all remember the, the the hazardous landscape that was solo standard back in the day and i think there is a reason why that mode eventually went away it's because people like the idea of, of teammates that are going to communicate with you or at least work with you on certain things rather than see mercenaries come here and there it's not a scoreline you see too often in a five-minute game. It's going to be the big fat 10-0 coming out from Sully Polly. As much as CMC have got a lot to go away from and work on after game number one, let us give some credit. Let us give some praise to Sunny Polly. Working so beautifully together. Everyone involved on the goal front. A lot of communication in the final third. And ultimately, they are making CMCC's life more difficult than it needs to be. Uh, and so ultimately, well-deserving of that game one win. Without a doubt, Relic. And it's so funny because at the beginning of that game, I said today, it's more about sending a message than it is about winning. And not only yeah. have they won the first game, they won it in a 10-0 fashion. Not a single point on the board from their opponents. I don't think there's a better way to show people you aren't here to mess around, but also to paint a giant target on your back. SUNY Poly, they have come out loud and proud. They're coming out super strong. And I'm already eager to see, moving further into the season, can they continue this style of dominance? But hey, this series isn't even over yet. There is more than enough time no. for CMCC to bring things back moving into game two. A 10-0 loss is difficult. In all reality, it could be slightly devastating yeah. to the mental, but if CMCC just recuperates, uses these couple of minutes to really get back into the swing of things, go for that full GG, go next mentality, I absolutely can see them bringing it back. Look, one rogue kickoff and all of a sudden you find yourself a goal exactly. down. It really is as, as quick uh, a table flip as that. Uh, for Sunny Polly, though, I mean, again, you've got yourself lots of goals, you've got yourself a, a clean sheet, and I would say, well, you know, based on this form, this series isn't going to last too long, but for the fact that they are scoring that many goals. And for CMCC, yes, you want to keep yourselves solid at the back, but, you know, try and be a little bit brave and, and have confidence in what you're doing, because we saw there, there was there was a chance to score a goal, for sure, wow. uh, but there was immediately a chance for Sunny Polly to score a goal straight off the kickoff, round the corner, la -di da bish bosh bash how many other superlatives you want to use? Tukan 1-0. You know, back at, after the five-second goal in game one, I kind of thought to myself, wow, that was really lucky for Suni Pali. But watching it happen identically a second time shows that that is not luck. That is raw, 
hardened skill. That is just a perfect execution of the play they needed to bring out to the table, and I'm, I'm truly impressed. 17 seconds off the clock. They've already put a point on the board, and they are shaping up to find another. Ooh. Toucan goes for the crossbar, though. Not going to let that happen. Still at that 1-0 scoreline. Let's see if they can clutch this back. That was a really nice block from Psycho Pancake. You gotta give credit. Again, like that was a difficult read and they were able to read it. There are signs of life here. There are signs of potential, but my goodness me, when the, when the ceiling seems to be shattered already, we see someone else on this Sunny Poly team crashing through. This is a difficult read. That is a difficult shot. Pings in off the boast and my goodness me, it's 2-0 already again within the first minute for Sunny Poly. 2-0 in the first minute. I mean, this is just coming out here with a true dominance and a true level of aggression that we expect to see at the highest caliber of collegiate gameplay just like this. Wesh has an opportunity, but it wasn't a guarantee. High risk, low reward. Chooses to fall back more into a defensive position as CMCC finds offense for just a moment, but it is stolen out from under them, and SUNY Poly puts that third point on the board. Now, this is one of the moments where you're looking at the VOD review if you're CMCC and your head in your hands. That was a big double commit, leaving the goalkeeper really exposed. Nice placement again coming out from Sunny Polly. It doesn't matter which player we're going to highlight. It doesn't matter which player is going to score. They are all doing this. They are all on target all the time. And when you get so many shots on target, the goals are going to arrive sooner or later. CMCC, the first step of getting better in Rocket League is to cut out the mistakes, but there are also moments of solo individual brilliance, and that seems to be something that Sunny Polly have in spades. That is the fourth point on the board. Sunny Polly, like you said, just a true dominance, a true ex ex excellent performance, excuse me. And I'm, I'm eager to see if they can continue kind of this reign of terror further through the series. They found a lot of great aggression early, and I think that is big in part due to the fact that CMCC is still, look at it right there, leaving their goal wide open. You cannot play a game like this without having somebody in that back third, without having somebody in that back half. And if they continue to let these free goals go in, I mean, this is going to be another 10-0. We were, we were touching a point a, upon the point earlier of, hey, game one. Flash in the pan, right? You never know which way it could go. And this is where it's so difficult for those teams which find such dominance in game number one. Can you carry that into game number two? Will we see a bit of complacency? But I have not seen a hint of that from Sunny Polly. At the rate they're going, Sept, we're not going to be going for a 10-0. We're going to be going well and far beyond it. And Sunny Polly deserving every single one of these that goes in. Absolutely. And it's so funny, Relic, because I talk to so many players. Something I often say is a team is in a situation where they no longer have to score. They just have to make sure their opponent doesn't. And then every single player that's ever heard me say that is like, Sept, no. That's absolutely not the case because even we could be up by a hundred points and we're still going to try to score as many as we possibly can. Oh, when it rains, it really does pour, doesn't it? It's just a, it's one of those touches off the corner wall that Psycho Pancake is going to want to go back and replay in his mind over and over again. And for Interstellar, right place, but poor touch in net going sideways, but the wrong type of sideways, effectively an own goal. And that's all of CMCC's making. I don't blame them. It's really demoralizing to be in a situation like this. And honestly, this is where the coach comes comes in clutch you know this is a, a, a difficult one but they've got to try and pick them up and say okay if we are to go on and lose this series it doesn't matter what happens let's learn as much as we can because ultimately this is the first series of the season Sept, and, and you're going to be facing opponents which will hopefully be a little bit closer to you in regards to that overall form and if you can pick up wins against them and if you can evolve throughout the season then hey who knows what could happen? But again, Sunny Polly on the attack, up to the ceiling, a flip reset. This is going to be a beautiful goal, I can oh. tell. Actually, it's not. For the first time, they fluffed their lines. I mean, that was such like such a huge setup for absolutely no follow-through. I think it was actually a <laughs> Sunny Polly member that got in the way and disrupted the goal, but you're still up 7-0. At this point, you're farming the highlight reel. You're looking for the style points, and I think Sunny Polly has found quite a few there. 8-0, 222 on the clock. Folks, we have just entered the second half of Game 2 here, and Sunni Pali already has eight points on the board. They're two points shy of what they got in five minutes back in Game 1. It's not a question of whether they can. It's a question of how further beyond can they at this point. And Sunny Polly 
with no signs of stopping. Maybe the first hint of complacency there in what could have been an easy goal. That was another great play in front of Net here. Tukan on the end of it. Wesh from the top of the box. Nice flip. Nice pass. And right on the end of it, Tukan. Again, this communication has to be commended for a brand new roster coming out from Sunny Poly. A team that has historically had some decent teams behind it. I think that, you know, first impressions, it doesn't matter what quality of opponent you are going up against. We are seeing exactly the hallmarks that we want to see from a team that is going to hopefully end up in the top half of the table come the end of it. Hey, you know that 10-0 from game number one? Already reached it with two minutes to go. Yeah, I... Sunny Poly, if you're listening, when I said 6-0, 7-0, 8-0, I, it was more of like a metaphor than a literal thing. So if you guys want to stop scoring so much, that would be cool. But if you guys want to keep going, y'all want to keep the action packed. I know what collegiate players are all about, and that is showing dominance. Sunny Poly has done just that. Like you said, 10-0, two minutes faster than they got it in game one. They're going for the any percent speed run. How quickly can they score 10 points in a game? Yo, pat the sats, baby. That's that's what it's all about. And another one. Oh, it's a dunk against two players. And Ben P snipes in and nicks it away. Oh, you really... Actually, no. Was this Ben P? Yeah, it was Ben P. That's a, that is a goal stealer. And that is outrageous. I'm sure the team are going to be on a whim about, about that one. But, you know, I, I often find it a shame, actually, because we don't take goal difference into account when it comes to Rocket League. It's all about game difference since the series the match is played after five games and Sunny Polly are going to be hoping that that rule perhaps changes for future seasons because if this is their goal scoring output my goodness what are they going to get across the entire season that's that's what I'm sorry I'm trying to do the math in my head right now we're gonna get 10 points per game 11 points now so they're already breaking the statistical expectation okay this is, oh oh I was gonna say this is it. possibly the moment but as I was about to say at the moment is snatched away the goal possibly gonna come through oh. instead blocked away secondary attempt also gonna be blocked away and with only 73 seconds left on the clock SUNY Poly 11-0 they've got game two in the bag they are halfway done to a 4-0 victory Oh my goodness, Wesh almost 1v3. That's a lovely win from Psycho Pancake. Now, what are we going to be able to do with this? Crafting dead. Up against the backboard. Hits the ceiling, but there's Wesh again. Beautiful control in the air again. Avoids one, and that another misplay. Now, I do feel, Seps, that we are starting to see signs of complacency in the Sunny Poly defense in the sunny poly counterattacks they are just looking for style points and to yeah. be fair i guess you can forgive them that because there's only 35 seconds left they've clearly won game number two nice to see the respect of rule number one or Does that rule number zero as a rule one i mean it's back to front but they're still not <laughs> moving i mean listen it's 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 it's, it's abstract fair but enough. i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna agree with it but the hey pieces look, are there the pieces are there exactly Oh man, 15 seconds left on the clock, and SUNY Poly, they have dominated game two in a one point stronger fashion than they did back in game one, which, like I said, Relic does put them already halfway to completing the four game necessity to winning the first week of ECAC. And at the rate they're playing, it's their series to lose right now. This team has shown some general extreme dominance so far, and something tells me this is not the type of team that's just gonna. Forget how to play the game. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to keep yeah. swinging. Well, look, the, the again, we talk about the coach's job for CMCC, and now he's got to pick them up and, and try and just, you know, relax them and say, look, it's just the first season. It's just the first series of the season. This is probably one of the most difficult teams we're going to come up against. We can definitely do better from here on out. But if you're the coach for, for Polly right now and you're looking at this, you're thinking, I need to just, you know, just, you know, not just massage the egos, but just sort of say, look, let's get the job done. We scored 10, 11 goals within three minutes of gameplay, and then we just stopped. Why? Were we really that comfortable? Did we really give them that excellent opportunity to score? Because they really should have scored from that opportunity, CMCC. That is going to be the one thing that I will say again, and that was an open air opportunity. Really should have put that away. Look, I hope that they just reset their mentals and are able to get back on the professional job once we hit game number three, because they've clearly got the ability to sweep this series. Uh, I, of course, CMCC will be hoping for a little bit more complacency, so more chances come there. 
Undoubtedly so. CMCC, like you said, looking for a couple more opportunities moving into game three. And we definitely saw some changes there. There were a couple of moments where CMCC had a, like you said, dominant ball control, but they missed on the goal in some incredibly crucial moments to put anything on the board. And speaking of things on the board, that's the first time we've seen a kickoff goal not go into the goal. So that is Shuni Pali not able to find that free point as early as they were back in games one and two. That's a sign of a lesson learned. That's a sign of a change of pace and signs of life coming out from CMCC. Let's see what they're able to do with it. And that was a nice clearance as well. It's a shame because they did have a player upfield, but they were taken off the board by a demo, and that's Sunny Polly just, oh, again, no. putting them to the sword. That's a lovely counterattack. Again, breaking up the defense here. Tukan able to beat away Psycho Pancake. Here comes the Shadow Strike. Well timed, well executed. Took them longer than before, of course, but Sunny Polly again have that open lead. That open lead coming in strong here. They're able to find that 1-0. Not as fast. It actually took about 20 seconds longer than games 1 and 2. So maybe we're not going to see that 11-0 this time. But with 427 still on the clock. And Sunni probably bringing out that same high caliber talent that we've seen before. And I'm sure we will see again. I suspect many points in the future. Wesh goes a little bit high. Gets bumped away by two defenders. A great demo opens it up. But the momentum from Toucan spins him around in the circle. Not able to run in towards the goal. Toucan brings it up and down into center field. It's a perfect setup for the goal. Wesh taps it in. Is the defender going to be there? Oh. Up and over in the goal. Suni Pali finding themselves up 2-0. to zero. It's like a baby playing with their food. There's a smile on all of their faces. And despite the shouts of the mother in the background going, What are you doing? Why are you getting so messy? I mean, look. They're having a great time, and I don't blame them either. They're able to essentially treat this not so much as a scrim, but as an opportunity, like you say, to show off to the rest of the league. Look how good we are. You should be scared. You should be setting up defensively against us, because otherwise we are going to make you pay. It's all about setting up. And I've got to say, the more Suni Pali sinks these points, the more Suni Pali puts on the board, they're just painting a larger and larger target on their backs. I'm really excited to see kind of as we move further into the series, further into the um, season, that's the word I'm looking for, is these other teams of the Suni Pali caliber, some of the highest skilled teams in ECAC, what are those games going to look like? Is there going to be someone to slay the behemoth that Suni Pali is creating themselves to be? I certainly hope that we can both past this team's journey because oh, I, I think so. that's always the most exciting thing whenever you see a, a new roster coming together or a new team entering a league doesn't matter what sport be it virtual or otherwise you just get excited is this a team that's really going to make an impact in the long run well again when Tukan is putting off plays like this you know we got that's that is your classic supersonic legend yeah. I'm just gonna flex on you now enjoy the light show if we see more of that on a consistent basis, and if we see more creativity from Sunny Polly, then yeah, absolutely. They are going to be in the top three at the end of the season. Another beautiful flick past the defender. Some of these goals, CMCC, they are going to improve, I'm sure, and they will be able to defend them later on in the season. But some of these other goals are going to threaten genuinely strong teams, rivals of Sunny Polly in the future. The scoreline may only be 4-0, only 4-0 at this point, with just over three minutes left on the clock. But Sunny Polly is in complete control, make no mistake. They truly are in complete and total control. But I think you brought up an interesting point here, Relic. Every other game, when we were at three minutes on the clock, we were already at six or seven to zero. So Sunny Polly, they are slowing down a little bit. You have to wonder, is that kind of a momentum thing? Did they accidentally run a sprint instead of a marathon? Is that an improvement from CMCC? Is, that, is it genuinely oh, harder oh. for Sunni Pali to score? And what an opportunity for CMCC that they did everything right. Unfortunately, just a timing diff and the defense got there when they needed to. But again, every game we're seeing growth from CMCC. And that's what this is all about at the end of the day. At this point, I am an unashamed CMCC fan. I am rooting for these guys to score a goal in this series. Please, I beg of you, I'm sure one of you will be able to step up to the plate. Oh my goodness, how close to scoring do you want to get without actually scoring? Ben P's gonna be wondering how on earth he didn't put that in. Yeah, you know, it's always because the ball has to be 100% past the goal line. 99.9, .9, not going to cut it, and it is a bummer every single time. But you're already up 4-0, to zero, so it's truly not the end of the world. Suni Pali nice. really just a great dominance still. Yeah, and it's nice to see CMCC changing up the tactic here. We're going with, a, we're going with something classic. We're going for the Gibbs. Septilance. We're going for the season one meta where you have yourself a goalkeeper. And you know what? If that helps with you defensively, and if you feel that you can spring a counterattack or at least stop the goals from going in, then that already is a sign of 
good things to come. Unfortunately, the defense just falling apart there as they look to try and engage out from the goal mouth. It's a nice pop from Tukan. It's a lovely lift from Tukan. And sadly, it was just the goalkeeper there. Uh, I think that was a crafting dead there. Caught on the top of the lip of the net. Everyone, we've all done it. There's no need to laugh whatsoever because we've all been there. Just a shame. And oh, the kickoff goes horribly. Oh, and how is oh, my... Oh! I don't know. Oh, I don't know. My, three botched attempts back to back to back. And that fourth one is nice a true block right there. A phenomenal save from CMCC. Interstellar going to lose that boost just when they needed it most. And that's going to give ball control right back into the hands of SUNY Poly. 70 seconds left on the clock. And... Toucan trying to get a little bit of action down into the center field. West goes in just to meet them as well. Ben P now trying to pick up where Toucan left off. That ball's still rocking and rolling in the center field. There's the opening for a double tap, but there is not a lick of follow through. Suni Pali going to miss out on that sixth goal, but with only 52 seconds left here, Relic, I don't see a world in which they're going to lose this game. SSL at least. We just saw a musty flick come out in this game. And you've got to have some decent car control in the air to be able to do something like that. Again, Tukan, so dangerous. It does seem like he can 1v3 at times with just how mechanically gifted he is. It's another good clearance. And I've got to say, credit to CMCC. This is the one major improvement we've seen from previous games. When they are able to get the blocks in, the clearances have been so much improved from games numbers one and two. And sure, they still haven't scored a goal, but let's build up the basics one at a time. Every great Rocket League team is built off of a strong defense. And if CMC can get that locked down, then the goals will naturally follow. Yeah, and I wholeheartedly agree because in a world, you know, in the game of Rocket League, there's such this smoke and mirrors belief that you need to go quickly to win the game. You need to be fast to win the game. But in reality, every successful team breaks down to a strong defense. If you're not allowing your opponents to score, you're keeping the scoreline as low as possible. Your team, statistically, has to find notably fewer goals to win the game. So it really comes down to having that strong defense relic. I'm right there with you in that agreement. And as SUNY Poly wins game number three, six to zero, I'm, I'm truly excited because, unfortunately, I, I don't know if there's going to be CMCC finding success here in this series. But we have seen with our own eyes every single game. We are seeing fundamental improvements. And isn't that the beautiful thing about Absolutely. the high school and collegiate scenes? I mean, look, I, I think that it's way too easy to look at these sorts of games. And, and if you're a school, just look at this. Gonna be, these guys are going to be a walkover. Like, I'm, we're facing them in three weeks' time. This is going to be an easy dub for us. No, it won't, <laughs> because these players are going to be working behind the scenes, and their rate of development is so much more extreme than what you see at the top level in RLCS. Because look, those guys, they've already hit such great heights that we're talking about such minutia of improvement. We see the things like wave dashes, little right. extra mechanical additions, which changes up the game and potentially changes the meta entirely. Less so nowadays, of course, than back in the early days of Rocket League. But here, you do not know when one team is going to stretch its legs and find that winning formula going forward. So CMCC, I'm proud of you guys. Like you have I genuinely agree. showed signs of improvement within a series. And if you're able to change your game, that quickly. I mean, adjustments is one of the key elements which will win you Rocket League games in the future. Without a doubt. I mean, think about it. Back in game one, it was uh, 10 to 0. We made a comment. We really wanted to see some more boost control. Immediately yeah. in game two, we're all over boost control. But unfortunately, there was nobody kind of playing goalie. Nobody in the back third. Game three, yeah. we've got somebody in the back third. We've got somebody on the goalie. So they are, like you said, changing these major improvements game by game by game. And that's kind of the beauty of week one, I think. It is It's only yeah. week one. You, you know, you're going and you're getting a collegiate experience and even if you walk away being 4-0'd you've got four games with an insane amount to watch and learn from and improve going into that next week it's, it, i think we're all billow baggins in this moment we're going on an adventure absolutely we're going on a really exciting adventure and again i repeat i really hope we get to see the journeys of both of these two teams later on in the season because i want to see how far can sunny poly really go how much improvement can we see from CMCC? It might very well be a 4-0 sweep at the end of this five minutes. But you know what? It's been a fascinating five minutes nonetheless. And we are once again seeing CMCC with much better defense. Except, again, this is the longest that they've gone without conceding first. Yeah, absolutely. And Relic, there's this story that I love to tell because it happened in Collegiate. And I got to watch it with my own eyes. Where, it, you know, it was a different game. It was Overwatch. But I think the same principle applies. And as Toucan scores again, I'm still going to continue on this story here. But I... In the first half of a season, I watched a team go one and nine. 
It was an absolute terrible season for them. Just devastating. They could not put a win on the board. But they go through, and the entire winter break, the entire winter, you know, separation between the new season start, they VOD reviewed and practiced every single day. They bring the same team to the second season, the second split. They go 10-0 on the season. <laughs> and that's what I love about the collegiate scene, is there's so much Fabulous. room for that massive growth. And to see these teams go from these teams that are getting 4-0'd to the teams that are dominating everybody in the circuit. That's what I love to see, and that's the beauty of week one, is we can be looking at this same team in four, five, six weeks and see a brand new team out on the field. And you know what, as relevant and as lovely as that story is, I actually just want to take it a little bit back to that first goal because oh, yeah. the Sunny Polly, had to bump the keeper out of the way to get that clear shot at net. Without that, CMC were holding them at bay. And again, we are past that first minute. It's only 2-0. Maybe Sunny Polly has slowed down of their own volition. Maybe they are still a little bit complacent from games one and two. But that's a shot at goal. And there have been more and more of those as the series has evolved as well. That was honestly the best shot at goal that we have seen thus far. Sadly, they go right down the other end. They do what Sunny Polly do best. They counter-attack. They are clinical. They are executioners here in the Rocket League scene. Uh, and there's not much more to say than that. Not much more to be said. 90 seconds off the clock, and it's so weird to say only three points on the board, but for SUNY Poly, that, that is weird right now. Every other time yep. we've been to three minutes on the clock, or three and a half minutes, we've seen four, five, six points. That was a nice attempt at a dunk, and again, I tell you what, CMC, again, we, we talk about going back and having a look at the VOD review, looking at what you did wrong, but honestly, you learn so much from what your opponents did right as well, and if there's one right, right. thing which I'm saying Sunny Poly is doing well, is their shadow strikes. Now, a lot of that comes down to communication, yes, but it's also down to just situational awareness. Where are you going to be setting up your car to be in the best position possible should this initial shot not go in? Or if you're going to be super 400 IQ, where do you need to be to follow up on what you are imagining is going to be this assist that your teammate is going to provide to you? The answer is oh, there. Yes. If you're Ben P, you could argue the CMC defense should do better, yes. But Benfi is in the right place. He knows that that is most likely not going in. It might go in, sure, but he should be in the right place just in case. He is, and that's 5-0. 5-0 on the board. Now, this is the three-minute SUNY Poly we're used to. They've immediately clawed back at the exact moment we saw them. And it's around three minutes. They've had five points on the board, I think, every single game so far. And with only three minutes left, I mean, Relic, they are very realistically about three minutes away from a complete and total shutout. Yeah, and it just goes to show how impressive they, they truly are, of course. Again, for CMCC, I hope it is not a total shutout. I hope that we get to see them score at least one goal. But another thing which I'm going to recommend to CMCC is definitely work on your aerial defending yeah, training packs. We've seen some great saves, don't get me wrong. And we've seen some, some great blocks and been in the right positions. But Sunny Polly has ruled the air. They have been a force raining down fire and even if the the final strike the sword into the heart comes from the ground the fact is is that you've not been able to meet them in the air to be able to stop that move from developing so work a little bit more on your aerials overall you're going to be a much better rounded team Crafting Dead can get this ball out of their back corner, but unfortunately, they set it up perfectly for Ben P to pinch off the corner there and knock that seventh ball in the goal. Just uh, an unfortunate uh, miscommunication there between two players. Ben P sneaks in with a little bit of boost and puts seven on the board. 2-2-2 two, two, two on the clock. Yeah, it's just unfortunate where they're all lined up in a row and so one bump on one car sees yep. a bump on another car and if you are all lined up as a team hey guess what you're more than likely odds on to hit one of your teammates oh. and to be fair sunny poly again keeping these demos uh, as a as an option in the midfield trying to ensure that cmc does not get any more joy that's a nice block actually there uh, top the top the uh, the gold mouth which is wonderful to see again that we're seeing more and more of this nice fake attempt crafting dead just watching brief and being able to put up one but oh that's another demo here it comes oh it's inevitable there it is ben p with the eighth point on the board absolute dominance we are under that two minute mark now and we're like I, I you know there is a chance of eight points going on the board but there's unfortunately statistically no chance of cmcc coming out from this you know we'd need eight goals in two minutes that would be nothing short of a miracle yeah and to be fair 
I think that a miracle... Uh, <laughs> I think that Sunny Polly might very well have thought the opposite, that they have had a miracle here. Because, <laughs> again, you, as, as a new roster, you really don't know how you're going to perform. Sure, you might have some, some pride and you might have an idea of how good you're going to be. And again, this is going to be a big moment for the coach where he says, okay, we've had a fantastic first day at the office. But we need to know how we're going to be playing in two three series time if we're still playing at this level and we should be expecting great things but the last thing that the sunny poly coach wants is to come away from this series for the three players here to feel like they're too big for their boots uh and then for them to get absolutely thrashed in their second series of the season they don't want that to happen we don't want that to happen we want to see them continue to flourish and, and so there's oh. a lot for sunny oh. poly to go away from this uh and, and learn as well but at the same time they've already learned plenty and Tukan for me MVP of no this series such a great player and so much belief that he backs himself in yeah. front of Nets I, I mean you're sitting there you're thinking like oh hey it's been 30 seconds since Suni Pali scored like is anybody gonna score who can Tukan comes in quick comes in swinging out the gate every time and like you said there's just this level of confidence from that player like doing some pretty wild things and just kind of thinking yeah i'll probably get it gets it every time it has been it has truly been mvp experience from toucan so far 60 seconds left on the clock 10-0 in favor of suni poly and they're going to be walking away with a 4-0 victory and a relic i, I want to touch down on it one more time and i hope cmcc has not taken any of this as us talking down to them but truly this is a team showing fundamental progress they're showing signs of life and this is a team that is showing qualities to be a great one so i really hope they can walk away from this 4-0 series even if it is a 4-0 i think they've learned a lot already and i think there's so much more left to be learned from this series alone it's week one guys exactly you're here you are in the league you know what you do in esports if you feel like you're underperforming you get on that grind get you work with your grind. teammates believe in your teammates listen to what your coach is saying and the, the improvements will arrive they already have in this series and that is why i'm confident that you will definitely have better days just a truly breathtaking performance from suny Bali. and like i said cmcc not your day that's all right that's what esports is all about get on that grind find the things you can continue to improve on and continue on into the weeks it is only week one after all there are so many stories left to be told closing in now 15 seconds left on the clock gonna see a double oh, go on. Come in from two given oh. the boost runs out just a little early he's a little bit too low on the ball and that will not be a 12 point on the board it looks like this is currently shaping up to tie our highest scoring game because they just cannot sink this 12. There it is. There it is. It's officially <laughs> our highest scoring game of the night with a 12-0 on the board from SUNY Poly. One second left on the clock. A clinical edge. Uh, let's add timing to that particular repertoire that they have in their arsenal. 12-0, biggest scoreline. They really did decide to up the ante again in this final game. This is the marker. This is their statement to the rest of the grid. We are here to stay at the top of the table. We can have quiet games and come back roaring later on as well. So impressed by Sunny Polly. Impressed too by CMCC. Again, they will have better days. They will get better, I'm absolutely sure. But Sunny Polly, uh, I hope that you do not take this uh, series for granted. You played very well. Yeah. And I will tell you that now. You played very, very well. Play that well next week as well. And, and then I will be a happy man. After that. <laughs> and every week after that as well. And then, hey, I won't just be a happy man, but you guys will probably be happy as well because you'll probably be at the top of the table. Absolutely. And hey, folks, I know you're going to be like, no way he's serious, but I am. Just as quickly as we got here, we're already done. We had the I one know. series yes. left for you guys tonight. We hope it was a banger. We had a great time here on the desk and we really got to see a lot of improvement, a lot of phenomenal gameplay tonight. So a big shout out to both teams for making it out tonight. A huge shout out to Colton, our producer and good friend in the back line for everything they've put on. A huge shout out to esports you for having us relic to you for joining me on the desk this was a phenomenal experience and to all of you watching at home we love each and every one of you so very much check your posture drink some water don't forget to love each other and we'll see you next time great oh hey i know hey Trust me when I tell you things have only been heating up. These teams are fighting for a chance to make it into the playoffs. And because of that, I mean, there's so much crazy action to get into. And, you know, don't take my word for it. Let's check out the plays.
Starting us off, it's a play that'll have you asking yourself, how did he do that? As melee juggles and ping pongs blighted right off the stage. Immediately, because the, the projectiles are so ever present, that reflector right there that you just saw is going to be in the back of Melly's mind throughout this set. But right now, Melly's doing a good job of getting around it, has the percent lead, and make it 64 right now on blighted stock. It's still being worked Ooh! away at the combo setup. At number 7, Red Ninja is just cleaning up the West as he gets this nice 3k to cap off the series. I had a lot of fun with it too. How does that win? I don't know. How does that, in, in any world, how does I, that possibly win? Here's, here's, here's what I can say, right? You have Big J5 running around in the back line on Roadhog just trying to cause havoc, right? You have a Symmetra teleporting all over the place. You have up next, there might just be a fourth member on the squad of RPI as the corner comes in clutch to take them to game number five. It's about as good as you're going to see for a team play off the corner wall and RPI takes a three goal lead. And with that, we have the fastest goal in this matchup so far. We started off with the quickest goal, the least amount of time. Okay, spoiler free intro this time. Someone gets a 4K clutch in this round. You just have to guess who. with that immediate elimination onto relay, making it a 5 4. But might be able to no will by the elimination onto Wu Yitang. Can back up, not for long. Wu Qian with that operator takes out Safadi, a real powerhouse player, has to kiss this round goodbye. UK, they're three rounds away, winning their third round and almost tying us back up. What a shot from Wu Qian there. It's going to be the blade still taken offline and by that KO point standing. blade. Without that blade storm, they may be able to win this one. Brown Baller with the three. Can he find the four? Jag? No, it's the right click that puts him in. Wukian with a 4K of his own. Win Kentucky. In our top half, it's Sonics in his attempt to nine stock NJCU that gives us this next play and this beautiful edge guard. Things will go swimmingly for themselves as of right now. See Hydra playing at a massive disadvantage, already at 109, but 92 on Sonic. So this was where we saw them actually take that stock against them. It was just a small little up no B. Way. One hit is all it takes. No, no rabbit. way! Rab oh my! Sonics is too <laughs> clean with it! For number three, Shrusi's got some things to say as he just pops off for King. So much to oh bear my. and well, at too much to bear. Shrusi, why take on one defenders when you can take on two? Maybe even all of them. Why get a hat trick when you can get five goals instead? 30 seconds to go. Literally every goal of this game has been from Shrusi. And you would go to think, you know, oh, obviously he's got a million shots. That's why he's just been putting on the pressure. Not really. He's five for seven. He's really accurate with what he's doing here. Not wasting his time oh, no. because shots like this, they don't come every day. But for Shrusi, it's another walk in the park. Give him the time in the air and he will do things like this. Somebody call it. Somebody call it. This is unfair. This and in second place this week, it's the perfectly timed EMP into self-destruct combo that completely wipes out Wichita State in the opening map against Johnson and Wynn. Self-destruct is there. Gentalian and Rogue combining for a massive fight win right there. 95%. And in our number one spot, it's a tour de force that some would say is almost excessive from Nagwin as he shuts the door onto Delaware. Uh, hey, the on the right side of the kill feed. Nagwen playing C long. A great job at it. Oh my goodness, even better. Trying to turn two into three. Not able to line it up yet, but there it is. And Tour de Force is a tour de force to be reckoned with. Nagwen taking out four to win the seventh round for UK. All right, and that is it. Now, I mean, like, what did I tell you guys? Things are only getting crazier and crazier. And with this wrapping up, that means there's only one more of these videos left to make. That means there's only four more weeks of playoffs left on the table. That's going to be starting up in just a little bit. And I mean, what a crazy season it's been and what a crazy season it's shaping up to be. 
Special thank you again to our partners at Esports U for providing us that extra broadcast coverage. But if you guys want to stay up to date, I mean, you already know where to go. But hey, if you haven't, if you don't know yet, you want to give us a follow on Twitter at ECAC underscore Esports. And you want to make sure you tune into the action live at twitch.tv slash ECAC underscore Esports. We are live on Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at 7. Trust me, you guys want to be there. We've only got so much action left in the season. And then, hey, before you know it, we'll be back again right around the corner for fall semester. But once again, I've been KTAD. Thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see you.